Okay, as weeded up as it is, <laughs> this is our passion fruit. <laughs> this is our passion fruit. It has overgrown with weeds below it, and we usually keep that weeded out. But this year, it got away from us. Uh, Lee usually mows and weed eats all around this, and our passion fruit is growing on the top of it but below it is just a bunch of weeds. I actually think, <clears throat> not sure what that is, but it may be ragweed, which is bad. It's also got a, a uh, poke. It's got a pokeberry growing in it, which I will utilize some of the pokeberry. Um, that's for a separate video, but I will utilize some of the pokeberry and pokeweed, uh, pokeberry and poke root. And uh, above that is the um, passion fruit. And it does have some fruit on it. If you can see that in there, let me zoom in. There's a whole bunch of passion fruit or maypops. Some call them maypops, we call them passion fruit growing on there. And then you have the flowers. And I'll get a close-up of the flowers. They're closed up a little bit right now, I think, because it's still morning. And early in the morning when there's dew still on everything, they're closed up, but they'll open back up uh, when the sun dries them up a little. I'll find a, a good one or show a picture here of what they look like opened up. So that is our passion flower vine. Uh, we've always just called it passion fruit and it has a flower on it, but it is technically called a passion flower and then it has fruit growing on it. So I didn't know that until recently. We just always called it passion fruit, uh, but it is a passion flower and has uh, fruit growing on it. Uh, so, I also did not know at first when we first uh, put this on it. Well, it grows wild around here, but when we first uh, moved it to this spot, and it has really taken over this arbor, and when we first moved it here, I did not know that you could also use the leaves. So um, I always heard them say passion flower was good for anxiety and help you sleep. And I thought it was just the flowers themselves. But the whole plant is called a passion flower. And I recently learned that you can use the leaves also. Now, you do want to make sure it is this kind of passion flower. There are different passion flowers. This one is all purple with really curly, um, curly, uh, flowers and um, there is a couple of varieties that don't have as curly um, of a of a, uh, petals that are uh, different colors and some of those you don't want to eat the leaves because they are uh, have a little bit of uh, the kind of cyanotic um, properties to them you know um, but so does apple seeds and elderberry seeds you know uh, elderberry plants. So I'm going to gather some of that. I'm going to get all of the blooms that I can and get some of the leaf too and um, make an, uh, passion, and make a passion flower uh, tincture uh, to help with anxiety and help with sleep. You can also use it as a tea and um, <clears throat> It's got lots of benefits. Uh, the main benefit that I'm going to be using it for is anxiety and sleep. And uh, it's supposed to help with um, Parkinson's, um, Parkinson's symptoms, like the shaking and stuff, and the ner nerves. It's good for nerve uh, problems. And so um, I think maybe with Lee's shaking, his shaking is uh, called uh, essential tremors. 
and uh, I'm thinking it might help him. So we're gonna try that too. Getting him to take it is the problem there. Uh, but if I can get him to take it, especially at night before he goes to bed, might help him sleep and, uh, and maybe help with the essential tremors. So um, anyway, we will let uh, the Maypops, uh, when they dry up and turn yellow, they're good to eat. So we'll let those hang on there until they uh, dry up some and start turning yellow. And then um, they're good to eat. I, I don't really, they have a lot of seeds, so I don't really eat a lot of them, but I have made uh, jam with them and that was really good. Uh, so you have to strain it good though, and that's uh, kind of a hassle. Um, but anyway, that's our passion flower vine, and uh, we will be utilizing that and using some of the flowers. Uh, I'll be getting all of the flowers off of there and some of the leaves to mix in with that. So I see one on top that's getting hit with sun pretty good. If I can, if I could zoom into that, but I can't. So I'm gonna pick some of that and uh, try to get all them flowers. They're pretty high up. I don't know if I can get them without Lee. I may need Lee's help to get all those flowers. But uh, especially with these weeds, if these weeds weren't here, I could get up under there good and get it. But I'm not getting up in these weeds to get it. So I'll have to get Lee's help. And uh, then I will show you how to make a tincture with that. And then I'll be drying some for tea. So there you go, there's our passion flower. So I got Lee to help me get some of that uh, passion flower. And oh my goodness, it just smells so good. I've got a bowl full of it here and uh, I've got quite a few flowers in here, probably about 10 uh, flowers that we got. And this is the Passiflora incarnata or it's called purple uh, passion flower. There are different colors, uh, like I already mentioned. And oh, the smell, huh. the smell is just unbelievable. And I've shook it off real good. I'm gonna shake it some more before I actually put it in my jar. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, I've already mentioned, good for um, anxiety and stress and sleep and um, I remembered, I have read that, I don't know if they've already done these studies, but there was a study, uh, <laughs> there goes one of the kittens, that's Medea. There's Medea. Um, I had read that it, they were studying it for ADHD, which makes sense because of the, uh, it helps with anxiety and stress, and uh, but it also can make you sleepy. So even with the ADHD, um, using it for that or anything, I would probably, I would recommend doing it at night time so that you're relaxed and ready to go to sleep because it does help with sleep. And I have used it for that. I have drank uh, passion flower tea before bedtime to help with sleep. You, I do already have two jars already done of my tincture of, of uh, uh, passion flower and uh, I'll be pouring those up soon straining them off and pouring them up in um, uh, dark glass bottles uh, dropper bottles um, so I'm also uh, gonna try to uh, I'm also gonna I've got some dried but I ended up using my dried to make a tincture so I'm gonna have to dry some so that I still have tea because I really like doing a tea at night time with it but I also like having it in a tincture form because it lasts forever. Um, it lasts a good 10 years anyway. And uh, so I've been doing more stuff in tinctures because of the preservation of how long it lasts. So let's uh, turn you down here and show you what I'm doing. All right. I use brandy. I've told this many times. I used to use vodka, a cheap vodka, but um, for the for the, for the price, you know, a cheap vodka, and it works great, but I don't like the taste of it. I had rather have brandy for the taste. So if I'm doing something that I'm gonna use uh, externally, 
I will go ahead and use the cheap vodka. But if I'm gonna take this, <laughs> it's gonna be a, a brandy because I can at least tolerate a brandy with a little honey in it and take it. So <clears throat> that's what we're gonna do. I have my little jar. Uh, I'll do a lot of my tinctures in these small jars and I may do two or three small jars. And the reason I do that is because I don't use these little jars that much. And a lot of times I don't make a whole lot of tincture if it's something I'm not gonna use a whole lot of. I like to have the little jars, but also because I use my pints for canning. We use a lot of, uh, um, most all the canning we do, we do in pints because it's usually just me and him. So I use my pints for canning. So, I, and we're not gonna use a whole quart of a tincture in a, in a long, long time. <laughs> So, I have gotten to where I just use these little uh, jelly jars, and uh, most of my tinctures are made in jelly jars, even if I have two or three of them. So, uh, so first thing I'm going to do, uh, I've got these pretty well. I think I've got them shook off pretty good. Let me double check that. I'm going to double check, make sure there's nothing else in there. Shake those off good. Now, what I would like to do, because I'm trying to get this video done, I would normally uh, let this sit and wilt just a little bit so that it absorbs this alcohol better. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. You don't have to. Uh, it just, uh, if it wilts a little bit, you don't have as much moisture and um, uh, get as much moisture in there and it uh, would absorb that alcohol a little better. But man, those flowers smell good, y'all. So uh, I'm just gonna put some flowers in here, see how far we go. I'm gonna use all my flowers first and get those in here. And I do, uh, I, I do not uh, go by a, a ratio, a formula for doing my um, tinctures. Um, there is uh, certain ratios you can go by. I kind of do uh, like 40% um, plant and 60% um, alcohol, but that's not the exact ratio. So uh, I, I just kind of, and I kind of guess it too. So I'm kind of a folk, herbalist and um, folk herbalist. I, I call it that because my dad taught me a whole lot of stuff. So it's been passed down through my family. And um, also because uh, kind of, I feel like folk herbalist is more of a not exact measurements of stuff, you know? And, um, and like I said, my dad, it, a folk herbalist, uh, usually has been passed down through generations. And that's what a lot of mine, especially wild plants. I know a lot of the wild plants better than I do herbs because of that, because my dad taught me. And um, so I've got a little bit of that left I can dry. Let's see, that's a little more than I need really. So I'm gonna pull a little bit back out. So I'm not, I'm not uh, pressing that in there hard. It's just kind of loose in there. You want plenty of room in there for your alcohol to get in there and fill that up. So you don't want to pack the um, plant tight. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm a home herbalist and I'm a folk herbalist. And uh, so by that, I don't really uh, measure a lot. I kind of eyeball stuff somewhat. And uh, anyway, um, a home herbalist does tinctures and, 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 and salves and medicine and food. Food is medicine also. So a home herbalist does that for their self and their family. Um, and that's what I do. And a, a, a folk herbalist, um, there's different kinds of herbalist. A folk herbalist um, has had knowledge passed down through the generations, and um, <clears throat> like I said, and it's a lot of more wild plants, I would say, than, than grown herbs. 
uh, and I know I, I think that fits me better. And uh, <clears throat> then you've got a certified herbalist that has schooling and knows all the uh, <clears throat> scientific names and all that stuff. And and uh, I don't have that. I would like to get that, and I may get that, but right now I don't have it. Um, but this is uh, Passiflora incarnata. Um, I know a few of them, you know, I'm learning them. Um, but I'm not stuck on that. To me, it's passion flower. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to get my mm, brandy out here. It needs to be at least 80 proof. And um, I'm just going to fill that up. I'm gonna grab a little spoon and kind of poke that down in there. Get that down in the alcohol good. Okay, and then I'm gonna put my lid on here and give that a shake. And uh, it's good to shake this every few days, shake it up every few days, but I don't always do that either. So, <laughs> I don't always do that either. Sometimes I forget and don't shake it and it's fine. It's fine. You do want to label well, label everything always because I've uh, made that mistake too. So, um, I'm just gonna put passion flower and the date and brandy. I'm gonna put brandy so I know I used brandy on this one and then the date and there we go i just use these little white labels you can use whatever i've heard a lot of people using painter's tape because it comes off easy this comes off easy too um especially if it's not coming off i just grab some uh orange cleaner and uh clean it off or lemon lemon or orange will get that right off <clears throat> so there you go there is my passion flower uh, tincture going. Um, this is actually my third one. <laughs> I've got two more in there. And the other two have already turned colors. They're brown and um, ready to be poured up. Uh, anyway, so there you go. And so, uh, so give me a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel and watch some of our uh, foraging videos. We, uh, we love foraging. We do a lots of foraging around here on our property. We have eight acres and we just, uh, we do lots of foraging. And, um, and uh, we uh, have a lot of, we have a couple of playlists on uh, foraging. So watch some of that and uh, thanks. Thanks for watching.